Welcome back to another episode of Recovery Life. My name is Latoya and we are back. Today we have a special guest, one that you have not met yet, and I'm going to give her a couple of minutes to introduce herself. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Latoya. Thank you for having me on the show. My name is Jennifer Murray. Um, I'm here uh, to spread, you know, hope for uh, those that are still suffering from the vicious cycle of addiction and mental health. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, wow, what an introduction. So, if you could say the first thing that comes to mind when you think about active addiction, what would it be? Misery, sadness, um, loneliness. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, loneliness, sadness, hurtful, ruined rela relationships. Mm -hmm. for the, mostly for the ones you love the most. Okay, so what does the other side of that feel like? What does the side of uh, recovery feel like to you? So um, I've had recovery time before, but chronic relapses, mm -hmm. and um, I know what it feels like to be clean like today and to be able to get up and put my feet planted on the floor, not being sick, not having to cover up lies that I told the day before or hurting people. It feels absolutely amazing. Awesome. So so that we could break the ice and you could be like totally comfortable. Yeah. You could just say shit. Yeah. Shit. There you go. And now you could be comfortable. Drop the F bomb. That's right. No, 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 don't don't no, drop no, that. No, I'm not, no, no, but, no. but I want you to be yeah. comfortable. I yeah. want you to know this is just a conversation that yeah. we have and this right. is your world and I'm visiting. So when you when you say to yourself, I am in recovery mm -hmm. and, and nobody's gonna stop me, mm -hmm. what does that look like to you? That means no relationships with men, no, uh, okay. no relationships with men right now. Mm -hmm. um, happy, healthy, a productive woman of society, and um, to be able to love myself more again and actually feel that love. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is that love, if you had to describe it, what does it look like? Uh, working in my own apartment, um, going to work every day, coming home, working my program, being able to be at family functions and um, not have to worry about being the sick, sick the next day from not drinking and being present. Oh, being present is very big. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that because they think that being present is just being there and being a nuisance when you're drunk or you're stumbling over things or ruining cookouts and parties. What does being present mean for you? Being able to belly laugh with my family and actually feel it. Mm -hmm. uh, friends, being around healthy friends, um, being able to, you know, get up every day and be present for myself, yeah. um, which is what is most important, and I need to keep that right at hand, because um, I tend to lose that along the way, and well, yeah, just being present in my body, me. I like that, that you use that a lot. I personally observe you, and you're doing an amazing job in your life and on your Thank recovery, you. and I just want to let you know that I'm very proud of you. Thank you. And you should be proud of you, too, every moment of your day, because you're working hard for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and being present for you is being a part of your own life and being a part of your family's life because you're taking care of you first. Mm -hmm. Tell me some of the things, the viewers, that what is it you have to do on a daily basis to make sure that you are okay? Um, well, I, you know, get up and the first thing that I've gotten into the habit of doing is thanking um, my higher power that, that I'm here and I'm healthy. Um, and I read out of my NA daily reading, also a woman's spirit. Um, I attend a meeting every morning okay. um, and I reach out to those uh, women who are in recovery. And if I have a craving, reach out on it. Mm -hmm. okay. What does that conversation sound like for a person who probably is going to be really intimidated by picking up the phone for the mm -hmm. first time mm -hmm. when you say, if I feel triggered, mm -hmm. what does that conversation feel like or look like? Well, I'm going to get a little nervous because it, the phone weighs a thousand pounds, they say. Um, but I would call my sponsor. Uh, my sponsor doesn't pick up. I go to the next one and um, let them know that I'm having, a, I'm having a craving and this is where I'm at and talk, talk the process through with them, play the tape the tape um, you know cravings are strong they manifest you know mm -hmm. they manifest and they take over your whole body um, and that one phone call can te technically save the rest of your life I love that mm -hmm. I love that response so do you know what a pink cloud is I do can you describe that to someone who doesn't know what it is yeah, a pink cloud is when um, things are going very well for you mm -hmm. um, in your life and you're doing great. Um, things are going good and then all of a sudden, comes along, it, it pops. <laughs> that mm -hmm. cloud pops. 
and um, it's important that people are prepared for that because it's going to happen. I, I, and nobody's life is perfect regardless of if you're recovering or not. That's right. Yeah. And the pink cloud is a is like a slang word for saying post-acute withdrawal Just, syndrome. That's correct. And um, what that means is you can just be having a regular day. Everything's going great. You mm -hmm. have your family in your life. You're visiting. You have a great job. You have mm -hmm. a vehicle. And boom, you break a nail and you decide that you feel <laughs> depressed and you can't get out of bed. And it doesn't take something magical or right. outrageous to happen mm -hmm. for this to happen. Correct. How has that been in your life to deal with that? Well, the thing is, is that I um, normally when that happens, you know, I instantly just use, <clears throat> if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that is not the way to go. It's not the way to go. Um, you know, I've been battling this for 22 years and um, it's not the way to go. And when it, fe it feels like you're down and out again and you, you want to numb those feelings inside. And the, sometimes what we know best is to go back to numbing ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And what do you do differently today? Today, um, I made a change to live in a structured environment. It's what I need, even at the age of 43, to live in a structured environment with a, a sober house. And, um, and I just reach out. I, yeah, I reach out, if that answers your question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, um, you do a lot of supporting other women, too, which is networking. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have difficulties having a relationship with one woman, let alone 15 and 20 and how how is that for you <laughs> it's tough it's tough okay. um, it's tough but um i keep in mind that um everybody is healing in the mm -hmm. house in some way or form you know we're in um sometimes you just have to accept people where they are sometimes it's hard you know mm -hmm. it's very hard to stay out of uh, the 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 gas up and cattiness try and do my best but um, I just make sure that I stay in my lane and I do what's asked of me. And um, if they need me, they can come to me. I'm a lock vault, you know, um, but do what I need to do and stay in my lane. And just I'm here for a reason, recovery focused. That's right. Yeah. Have you ever heard the saying, have you ever been around someone who says that um, I'm only an alcoholic and I've never did drugs before? Mm -hmm. Tell me what that means. So that means that, you know, I'm just an alcoholic and I didn't do drugs, so that means I'm not an addict. Mm -hmm. And um, a, a drug is a drug is a drug, and alcohol, although it's legal, still, uh, is, still can be, is a drug. It can be mm -hmm. very abused. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were good. So because I hear, you know, I can hear the difference when people say I'm alcoholic, and, and, and that mm -hmm. is the truth if you are an alcoholic. and Correct. that's. A, um, however, if you're doing, uh, alcohol has made me try other things in, in the days that, you know, mm -hmm. and because of the power of alcohol, mm -hmm. trying other things that I have no knowledge about mm -hmm. means that I'm willing to try anything, anything. right? Mm -hmm. And under these circumstances, that makes you an addict because you're addicted to whatever it is that can make you feel mind differently altering. than you do. Right. Any mind, mind altering. Absolutely. And that's why when I introduced myself at a meeting, hi, Jenny, I'm an addict alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I'm both. And it, to be honest with you, it's not until I take that, the, the, it's not until I drink that I'm craving the other substances. Mm -hmm. You know, I think for a while my mind was tripping itself up, you know, oh, you just have a drink, you know, and the next thing you know, I'm down to doing other substances. Yeah. That's so right. absolutely. So do you think that a person who has raised their hand and said that they're an addict or an alcoholic, you think that they can have just one? No. <laughs> no, because one's too many and a thousand is never enough, mm -hmm. as they say. Yeah. No. Um, being in recovery, clean is clean. And, and one can lead, to, one, just one drink can lead to an overdose if you go to something else. Right. And I've had quite a few, last one in January. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's tough. Yeah, it was tough for my sister, Jackie. Uh, it was tough for the whole family. I, it was in ICU for uh, a week and a half. And when she found me, I had um, one respiration left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you I remember it? I don't. I remember, um, I remember getting a cocaine, um, but I also did get a little bit of heroin. Um, it wasn't fun, and I was heroin, and as soon as it hit my nose, I knew I was in trouble. I knew I was in trouble um, by the potency. And I just remember um, waking up briefly, saying I'm supposed to go to work, be at work. It was the next 
day or maybe it was still the same day. I don't know because it was light out. And that's all I remember. And then just remember waking up at Middlesex um, in the ICU. That's all I remember. Had it not been for my job calling to, save me, to tell my sister, uh, I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. Yeah. And that's what you remembered. And then what was your next move like for you? I'm going to be quite honest. That's why I'm on the show to, to share. Um, I went out and overdosed the next day. I, or, I'm sorry, the day that I got out yeah. after a week. One would think that, you know, that would be, I've had nine overdoses, and one would think that I would eventually get it, but this addiction is so cutting, baffling, and powerful that um, it just wasn't stopping me. It wasn't stopping me. Um, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. So when you say nine overdoses, who brought you back to life? I was narcan every time. My mother the first two times, or at three times. Uh, one time I was at a friend's house. Um, my ex-boyfriend, um, the EMTs themselves, when I pulled off the side of the road and they found me. Um, I don't remember the couple other, but my, you know, the, the most recent one that sticks out in my head, it, it, well, all of them do, but um, this one with my sister. I can't imagine what she felt like finding her baby sister like that and press it on her chest for 17 minutes. Yeah. To bring you back. To bring me back. And so... Mm -hmm you were brought back so you can help a whole lot of young ladies who are gonna see this because um, mm -hmm. the show Recovery Life is based on um, the life of, of a recovering addict mm -hmm. who um, could be anything, food, drugs, gambling, sex, mm -hmm. whatever it is. When we talk about someone being Narcaned mm -hmm. back to life nine times mm -hmm. and being uh, someone having CPR mm -hmm. administered for 17 minutes and family members finding you to be able to to be that saving grace for you. Mm -hmm. And you being honest and saying that one of those times I got out and I overdosed again that very day. So for the person who has no idea, because when I look at you, mm -hmm. I know who you are because you know who I am because we're a sisterhood. Correct. And when somebody doesn't know you and they walk into a bank, you fit into the bank. Do you, you know, yeah, right. you look like you could be a banker. Mm -hmm. You look like you could be a realtor. You, mm -hmm. yeah. It has no look, does it? No, it does not. Mm -mm. It can't define you either. It shouldn't define you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Yep. Tell us what the walk was like when you finally said to myself, what is up? You know, um, I was uh, renting from my, a condo from my sister in Ivorton. And um, I knew that I had to go in. I needed mental health help. And um, it was a struggle getting me in there, but um, I knew I was done. It was lonely. I was done. Uh, I was tired. And um, it was hard to walk away from all that. You know, I wouldn't say that she took the condo from me. I gave it up. I gave it up because I wasn't working my program. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was hard. It was, it was hard. But I knew that there's got to be, because I felt it before, a better way than what I was living there. Um, it, it sucked. I had to adopt out my two cats, Lily and Chloe, that I absolutely mm -hmm. love. They're my children. Um, but I wanted them to have consistency, you know. Um, and it was scary. Detox again, here we go. You know, and then the move to New London, where I'm not familiar with this community. But it's been very welcoming. Mm -hmm. um, and living in a sober house with uh, 15 plus women, mm -hmm. uh, was definitely a change. Definitely, you know, definitely a change. Yeah. But still, at the end of the day, or in the morning, or at the end of the night, I'm able to lay my head my head down, knowing that I didn't tell a lie. I tried the best that I could, and that my family knows I'm safe and I'm safe. And to be able to wake up in the morning, knowing that I'm safe and I'm not sick, and I have another another opportunity at this, I'm ready to. Um, I have both feet in this time, Thank you. no reservations. Mm -hmm. And I wanna say this to you because um, I don't think, I want the viewers to understand how triumphant your story is and, mm -hmm. and what a role model you truly are. Thank you. Because you do, everybody's not the same and no. you don't have to be in the situation you're in, you're choosing it because you're choosing to have more stability, it's a choice. Correct. Correct. And then when once you make that choice to say, listen, I'm not putting my family through this anymore. I deserve to learn how to live my life from mm -hmm. scratch like everybody else. I'm right. not going to um, take the easy way where I know I can get some help. You're doing this. Yeah, yeah I am. You're yeah. doing this. Yeah, I'm doing it. 
I'm, I'm doing it, and I'll never say that I got this because I don't like that. Um, recovery is going to take, it's hard in the beginning. It's hard. It's hard maybe for the first couple of years, but it does get easier, and it is possible to the viewers out there. And I'll never say that I got this because this is going to be work every day for the rest of my life. And um, I'm only going to get out of it what I put in. That's right. Yeah. You put in a lot. Mm. You put in a lot. You're like mm -hmm. um, very hungry for knowledge. Yeah. And um, to be able to stop and say, I'm going to take a moment to give back to people so that they really know what it, what it's like. Yeah. Um, because it does make a difference when people think one way when they see you and then you tell your truth and your Correct. story and you Correct. say, um, mm -hmm. wow, yeah. I, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a wow moment. A wow moment, yeah. A wow moment that can help somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know what? Um, I, I'm so happy to be on this show, and thank you. But the whole point of this is not is for me to be on here, yes, because I'm proud of myself. But if somebody can just get one thing out of what I'm saying or one family member out of what I'm saying to know that they're not alone, and they're not alone. I felt alone. I knew recovery is possible, but you're not alone then that would like, that's all I want is somebody to be able to get a, some small piece out of this. So don't, don't stop, keep pushing, keep pushing. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. I think that's gonna be a lot of people that get a lot out of. So tell me how much time you have clean right now. So my mm -hmm. um, recovery date is April 7th, mm -hmm. and I just got my 60 day keychain last week mm -hmm. on the 7th of this month, so I am like 70 something days. Oh no, that's right. I know, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> And an honest 70 day, a hard, 70, working. A hard working. And when I get my 90, because I'm going to get it, that's when right. I get my 90, that's going to be the, uh, the, you know, honest as well. And then after that, you know, I wasn't always on, oh, I'm clean, I'm clean, you know, but no, this is, oh, I'm clean. Yes, right. I'm doing the damn thing. That's right. <laughs> you're doing, you are definitely doing it. Yes. And you're, you know, you're accumulating gifts of the mm -hmm. program. That's what I like to call them. Yeah. When people get things, like we can, we're very strategic and very, um, um, addicts are really, 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 really a contribution to the community mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> when yeah. they're in recovery. When they're in recovery, <laughs> right, right, right. If there's too many of them not in recovery, right. I wouldn't want to ask in my neighborhood either, no. but I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> no. If yeah. they got some key tags to show me, then we all right. Then we good, yeah. <laughs> but they are so, they're such an asset. They carpenters and painters and Correct. roofers and mechanics and mm -hmm. doctors and nurses. Yeah. And when they're in recovery, their heart is huge and they love to give back. Mm -hmm. And so what is it that you want to do to give back? Or what's the goal for you? Like, what is the goal? Thank you for asking. Um, well, I'm a CNA, just got hired at Bacchus Hospital. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and you know <laughs> it. And the first thing that came to mind is that, you know, I'm going to be able to work on all different units. And I would love to be able to come across someone who is there for an overdose or there, you know, to be able to give back and share my story um, and be able to spread the message to them. Uh, I never done volunteer work, but maybe at a battered, battered women's shelter, mm -hmm. um, you know, or even just taking someone out for coffee that's struggling, that just a conversation, a, a simple conversation can make a huge impact in someone's life. That's so they true. They give it back, yeah, in understanding. Absolutely, yeah. You know, the great thing about being if I, if I have to th uh, think of something about the great thing about being an addict in recovery is that some people live their whole lives not knowing who they want to be. Us in recovery, we get multiple opportunities or good opportunities to dig down deep who we want to be and why and find the underlining issues as to why we're addicted and why uh, we're living like this. And I think the people in recovery that are doing are the coolest people around, to be no offense, the coolest people around because they're understanding, they know the trials and tribulations, and there's nothing that you can't tell them that they, I feel like they won't understand. That's right. They've been it, they lived it. That's right. And now they're living proof that they, you can recover. Yeah. That is true. It's like meeting family, like I say, and we're everywhere. You can go anywhere, yep. and it's like meeting uh, family members at the family reunion, wherever you go, you're meeting right. new family right, members. Right, right. So when you travel, you go to a meeting somewhere else and you're meeting new family members, Absolutely. right? That's right. Yeah, yeah it's uh, one big, uh, you know, when I moved down here, I was nervous because I'm new to the community. But everybody, no matter where I go, someone's there with a hug and an open welcome, you know, and, and an open welcoming right. in recovery and meetings. Absolutely. You know, it's, and even if you, please notice uh, to the viewers, even if you relapse, you know, uh, and you can keep coming back. 
You keep yeah. coming back, and you're still well. You know, you're still welcome the same. That's right. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and hey, just glad you made it back. That's right. You know? <laughs> that's right. We glad you hey. made it back. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the things. Keep coming back. Yeah. Keep coming back. Mm -hmm. That's one of the major things is to just keep coming back. Yeah. Until you get it. So the, there's a family member that's listening mm -hmm. who doesn't who thinks that a person can just stop. Why don't you just stop? Mm -hmm. I mean, just what does that mean? Some some people can just stop in that you know and not work the program, and and it's good that they do because then they find out the reasons why and, and are able to communicate with another family member better or addict. But you can't just stop. It's a disease, okay? It's a disease, mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of work. And um, until you start tackling the reasons why you're using. Um, you're not getting anywhere and so to the family member that's listening try and be understanding if you can um, that it can't just stop it's, it's just not like that it's a habit you're born with the disease I firmly believe that mm -hmm. and to try and be patient and understand try and be patient and understanding I will give you the, that advice uh, because that's how my mother was may she rest in peace that's how my mother was um, and um, I'm pretty sure that that addict if they could just stop they would Mm -hmm. They would, okay, because in the beginning it's a little fun, and then at the end, no, it's a full-time job, and it's scary and lonely. But if they could just physically, chemically, and mentally stop, yep. they, they would. They absolutely would, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and there has to be healthy boundaries. I understand that, you know, right? Um, mm -hmm. My mom, uh, people were upset with my mom for a little while, you know, because I was still living at home, and um, I was using, and she just wanted to make sure I was safe. And um, I can thank her today and my stepfather for keeping me home because all those overdoses, I might not be sitting here. Right. Yeah. You probably wouldn't be sitting here. No, there. no. I miss her deeply, but yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you do to fill the void of grief? That's still something I'm working on, you right. know, because before it was the alcohol and the cocaine, you know. Um, I see a therapist, I talk with my therapist about the grief, um, and I'm grieving from all kinds of things. I'm grieving from my drug right now. Right. I'm grieving from my drug, the loss of my mom and my stepdad in 2022. Um, and I just, they're not in pain anymore, so I'm able to grieve that way. And they're both yeah. together, so that's, you know. Okay. Um, and it weighs heavy on me at times, but I'm very lucky, Latoya. I come from a family who all they want me to do is be well. And I have um, definitely tamp uh, tainted some relationships, mm -hmm. but they're all still there today. The things that I've put my sister th through for worrying, and that girl is my ride or die till the wheels fall off. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky that I still have them. Absolutely. So to deal, I always say, you know, like, I feel bad about this. I feel bad about that. I told my sister, it's too early to make amends right now, but we will. You know, mm -hmm. we will. And she knows. And um, the fact that we're good, she says, we're good. You're doing what you need to be doing. Um, I, I journal. You know, okay. I do journal and I talk to my therapist and, you know, bring the conversation up. They come in sporadic. You know, I'm sorry that I did this. And they forgive me because they want me to be able to move forward. Right. And I'm very lucky for that. All yeah. right. <laughs> well, Jennifer, you are in the amends stage. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a process. It's not a, um, it's not words. It's, it's the, them watching your life. It's an action. Correct. Correct. Because what happens is family members, loved ones, whoever it is, they're sick of hearing the I'm sorry shit. Absolutely. Because what that is is consistent slap in the face mm -hmm. uh, from all the times that you said I'm going to do it this time. Yeah. It doesn't work. And so when you really mean it, mm -hmm. you cried wolf so many times yep. that we ran out of wolves. Correct. Right? Correct. So now all we want to see is the picnic basket. The action. We yeah. want to see the picnic the basket. Make bag. it yeah. with all the food in yeah, it. Right. Grandma, that's right? right. So when mm -hmm. we show up, mm -hmm. we show up and that's they right. see the difference. Yeah. They can see the difference. Mm -hmm. They can see you show up. They can see you stand at your word. They can see you call and cancel when you can't make it. Correct. They can see you really trying to get there, but you, it's not just like, I want to be there, but I'm going to do this cocaine right now, and I right. know that I'm going to be at this table for four days. Yeah. And I'm going <laughs> to really want to be there for Christmas, but right. Christmas was three days ago. Three days ago, yeah. I'm coming. I'll be here. <laughs> I'll I'm be on there. My way. Yep. I got that bike. Coming down the driveway. Yeah, there you I'll go. Be, <laughs> you see me? You see me? <laughs> That's me. You right. don't see me? You don't That's see my car. headlights? <laughs> 
You see that? Don't even, don't even own a car anymore. No, right, right, right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Haven't seen your car in weeks since the dealer took it. Exactly. You, know, you, you right. see my headlights. You don't even see your headlights. Yeah, you're right. No, no, I don't even know which way I'm going. <laughs> I know I'm going crazy, though. Crazy train. Right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. So it feels good, right, when you can yeah. just... It does. It does. It, it, it feels good to be able to... Like, yeah, be present, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I, I, yes, I keep meaning to mention my sister because she's my big part, Jackie, of That's my right. life. And she works very hard and is in this line of work. And so seeing her, and I wouldn't change, but seeing her little sister go through it uh, for multiple years and stuff and then doing that line of work, I don't want, I want to be able to have a healthy relationship Tell with her. I love her. She can see you. I love you, Jackie. <laughs> I love you, Jackie, and thank you for, you know, multiple years of understanding she's the coolest i'm telling you she's the coolest this is going to be on history mm -hmm. the, the tapes are going to be right. there forever forever so. right yeah, absolutely see. absolutely you know um she's never left my side I, I remember when i was eight years old i wanted to be called lynn and she <laughs> would put you know to lynn like she's just cool very cool down to earth she's a very special person not just for me but for every for the people that she cares for um wonderful mother and um I idolize her. I do. I look up to her. Most definitely. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm yeah. very happy to have had you here today. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Um, if To the viewers, please, anything you can take out of my story, um, yep. take out of my story, take what you would like and leave the rest. Um, but I hope that this, you know, affects a family member, a, uh, somebody in that's actively using right now, it's mm -hmm. possible. You know, the phone weighs a thousand pounds, but it's not going to feel like that forever. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Thank you, Latoya. Thank you. You are absolutely amazing, and I want Thank you to know I'm going to have you back in the future when that's so great. That, um, we Because we sisters now, we right? Sisters we now. sisters now. Yes, <laughs> I'm milk chocolate, you white chocolate. That's right, girl. that's right. We can make an Oreo. Twin <laughs> 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 we both crazy as hell, That's too. all right, yeah. Thank you again for being here today. You're very welcome. So you want to give you. them about 60 seconds of hope before you sure. go? Um, I had no hope. Uh, and there is hope. There absolutely is hope. There's more. There's a lot more people out there um, actively using and more than you know. It could be your banker. It could be your stop and shop worker. Mm -hmm. and, and there is hope. I am sitting here as living proof of nine overdoses with it. Um, that it is possible um, and if you know in the beginning if you relapse come back come back because we're here with open arms welcoming you no matter what no judgment get a get a white key tag get key tag key tag get a white tea cat right. tag welcome back you know and there's hope pick up the phone you know get women's numbers That's right. you know get women's numbers get a sponsor you know even if it's a temporary one but there is hope out there um, and I know I've been at the bottom where I felt like there was none, there was none. but there's hope. And um, wherever you can get your support, get it. We are a big NA community AA. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Recovery Life. <laughs> Ciao.